Hey everybody, Kevin Hoyt, Principal Evangelist with Kazing here. Now, did you know that your car has a computer in it? I'm sure you did. Everything has a computer in it these days, even your toilet. But, and specifically, your car has lots of different computers. You might have one in your dashboard, but the one that I'm talking about is the one controlling your engine. That's called an engine control unit. And you can access the data coming from the engine control unit computer by uh, a port in your car. It's usually just located underneath the dash. And it's called the OBD port, the Onboard Diagnostics port. This is an OBD adapter. Not much to it. A little brick. It's about two inches by an inch. It's got this kind of old-fashioned uh, kind of pin display, pin uh, input on the front. And that was standard reason since OBD come, dates back to around 1995, depending on your country. Now, if you take the OBD adapter and, and plug it into the car and get the engine control unit data, you can then pass that off to a computer. A computer might be something like this. This is an Intel IoT gateway. Um, it's got a GSM radio in it, USB ports, Bluetooth, wireless, the whole bit. Or you might choose something a little more scaled down, maybe like this, a Raspberry Pi. It'll work as well. A little Bluetooth in there, a little Wi-Fi in there, and you'll be off to the races. So we put the OBD port into the computer, or into the uh, car's computer, rather, and then we have our computers that we're going to be able to retrieve that data from the engine control unit and uh, you know it seems like we should have GPS in there too so in this case I'm going to use a little GPS that uh, can suction onto the window and it'll just uh, go ahead and record our uh, our trip for us now most computers in cars today have GPS in them but access to that data is usually limited to, uh, to uh, the vendor itself it's not something that's covered as part of the OBD specification that most people can access. So we'll use a third-party GPS to uh, go ahead and make our trip recorded. So you put all that together, and what do you get? Well, when you pair it with Kazing Gateway, you get a real-time vehicle telemetry op uh, application. You can drive around, and you get real-time engine data, you get real-time position, and the type of data you can get from the engine control unit off the OBD port is, you know, just about everything you might, even like compression levels, oxygen levels. Um, but generally speaking, most of the stuff you'll see in your dashboard, things like the fuel, how much fuel you've got, uh, the speed of your car, the revolutions per minute of the engine, uh, the engine temperature, the intake uh, temperature as well, all kinds of data about the a car's engine and how it's operating. So anything you might normally see on the dashboard, you can see. Of course, again, we're going to use GPS to track our position, and then we'll have real-time vehicle telemetry thanks to Kazin Gateway. You ready? Let's go on a drive. All right, are you buckled up? All right, here we go. So uh, first, I've, I've got to get out of the neighborhood. That's when we'll start to see some more interesting um, data coming from the car itself. Um, as I head out of the neighborhood here, we'll just drive through these houses around the cars parked on the street. Watch out for oncoming traffic. Obey the stop signs. And I should probably note that it's very dangerous to demo and drive. So uh, if you're going to do this, please be careful. I had help with me. Uh, my daughter Paige was uh, uh, along for the ride uh, in this case. So we're going to uh, turn out of the neighborhood here. And uh, then we'll turn on to one of the main streets in the uh, community in which I live. Got to stop for oncoming traffic here. There's a big truck coming our way. Don't want to pull out in front of him. There he goes. All right, great. So we're off. Now it's worth noting here that I'm driving a 2013 Toyota Prius. 
Uh, and why is that interesting? Well, because occasionally you'll see the RPM, the blue bar on the bottom, drop off all the way to zero while the collar's still going. It's because effectively the engine shuts down in the Prius uh, when it's not needed, and so it just drops off to zero, which is kind of an interesting thing to see reflected from the engine data. Uh, and indeed, the speed, the RPM, the fuel level, and the uh, temperature, the coolant temperature in this case, are all coming from the onboard computer inside the car, um, the engine control unit proper. So, how does all this work? Well, it starts with uh, Java on board one of those computers I mentioned to you earlier. It could be the, um, the Intel IoT Gateway, a Raspberry Pi, or something else uh, would work just fine. So I have a Java program running on that computer, and it accesses the OBD port uh, data coming from that adapter I showed you earlier. It uses Bluetooth. That, that little adapter happens to use Bluetooth. So uh, the computer, the Java program, is accessing the OBD data via Bluetooth. It's also then got that uh, GPS plugged in. It's a, just a USB plug, so it plugs right into the computer as well. And it, and it, and it goes ahead and records that GPS data. Uh, that's just a serial access. So we, we take all the engine data, and we take the GPS data, and we put a message uh, together, and we send that over the Kazin gateway. So I should mention also that the Kazin gateway is open source, uh, and there's even a free cloud option, which is what this is actually using for uh, its operation. And so with, when we pair that Kazin gateway with all this data, uh, we have a real-time data telemetry. Now, of course, we need to be able to view that as well. So in this case, the web client that you're looking at here, it uses a, a web socket, uh, specifically a client designed by Kazing to be able to handle things like a uh, fallback to older versions uh, or browser versions that don't even support WebSocket. Um, and it also has in it the capability to handle messaging. So we're actually dropping messages on a message bus here uh, that is delivering the, then to any client that's interested in that, in that uh, message, and it's pushing that data. Now, the, the map is Google Maps, and uh, when the GPS data and the other car, car telemetry data arise over the message bus into the Kazin Gateway client here, it goes ahead and then updates the map and the car position and draws the line and all that good stuff. And then on the bottom is the actual um, engine data mapped out, and that's done with SVG. Just a little SVG trickery there to go ahead and, and make those curved lines and, and charts to uh, look like a little fancy dashboard. Now there's also the capability to, to log all this to the database, and in fact, um, while this particular instance we're not doing that, I can also record the data log it in a database, and this might be helpful for playback, uh, maybe in case of an accident or something along those lines, right? You might be able to, to see what was going on, when the driver hit the brake, where they were when they hit the brake, what angle they were, what was going on with the car, uh, how hard they were pressing on the brake, things like that you can actually get from the engine control unit. So you might be able to play that back in case of an accident to, uh, uh, to help you know, with litigation or any other uh, means. And, and in fact, you start to see some uh, insurance companies do this today they have what they call usage-based insurance. So usage-based insurance, something like a progressive snapshot or the insurance drive sense, there are several of them out there. Um, what that provides is, is the uh, insurance companies get data about your driving habits and can then tune in your insurance rate. The, 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 in the insurance uh, systems, the snapshot, the drive sense, things like that, they're, they're batch systems. They capture data and upload them incrementally per uh, per the drive. Um, keep in mind, this is a real-time data telemetry system. This is happening in real time, uh, the data coming off the car in real time, and that gives us some extra um, upside that we could take advantage of in our application. Uh, you might also see something like this done in logistics and transportation, or FedEx, a UPS, for example. Uh, they, they, of course, they track their fleets, where the cars are, what they're doing, um, even conditions of the freight systems themselves. Uh, for example, if you have insurance based on uh, uh, freight, and that freight needs to be in temperature-controlled uh, environment, right? You want to make sure that temperature-controlled environment is actually maintaining that temperature. So, uh, FedEx and UPS, for example, have systems that do this, but they're usually based on very costly, uh, high-end, real-time uh, solutions, commercial solutions, and, and I, I think you know while that's valid. And they get great benefits from it. They pay a lot for it. With IoT today and with Kazin Gateway, 
you really we're looking at you know 75 bucks worth of hardware here between the OBD port and the uh, the computer and the GPS um, really not a whole lot to get started with real-time data telemetry and I think that really shows the, the value that IOT is bringing from uh, an economic standpoint to hardware as well as the software and the data we can get from that so um, so this is what it's like to drive in real time using real-time data telemetry with Kazin Gateway. If you want more uh, information, check out the blog or hit me up on Twitter, K.R. Hoyt, and I'll tell you all about it. Hey, Paige. You know you're parked in the Prius, right? Oh, yeah.